What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel. So today, put a little bit of work in. It's the weekend, but getting out of here early. Uh, put a little work in the socket drawer where I'm going with that. Uh, video's coming soon, guys, I promise. It's not what this video's about. We're gonna do a quick comparison on the Mini Ductors. Just upgraded to the Venom, the uh, Mini Ductor 3. Basically, you call it the Mini Ductor Venom. I'm gonna compare it to my old one that I got. Show you guys maybe a quick comparison. What are some of the features on both of them? Can you get away with buying a cheaper one? Or would you go with the Mini Doctor Venom? Check it out. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> All right, guys, so here are the two right here. They both come in blow molded cases. You guys probably seen this one on a few of my other videos. I think a few companies rebrand this one. Got this one, it says uh, YO. Um, got this one off Amazon, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so. You know, definitely burned up, burned through most of the coils and all that stuff. Still worked great though. Definitely still worked. Um, but you know, before I bought this one, I had my eye on the Venom. Definitely wanted that, but you know, you know, the price of these things are kind of expensive. I figure, you know, let's get one, see what it's all about, and uh, kind of go from there. But you know, buying this one, using it for a year now, this thing's definitely paid for itself. It's still going strong. I got no gripes on it. I actually personally like the handle style better, you know, that 90 degree angle better than, you know, this 45 degree angle, better than the straight ones, the one and two, where it was just a straight, you know, Version one was pretty much just a cardboard tube, and then the Mini Ductor uh, two was a plastic straight unit, and then now they got this little bit of curve. Some great features on this one. Definitely like that there's no thumb screws like this one, but we're gonna get this one over there to the parts bench, run through a couple of comparison on them, see how long they both take to maybe heat up a bolt, something like that. I'll give you my thoughts on them and uh, what this one's the better, and maybe pros and cons of this one as opposed to this one or the pros and cons of this one as opposed to this one. So check it out. All right guys, so what I wanna do first is pull out the older Wild Mini Ductor I got. Um, talk about some of the features, obviously nice long cord. I told you guys I like the pistol style more, you know, to get in those harder to reach area, your hands a little more out of the way and you ain't gotta kinda of bend the wrist. Even though, you know, the coils you could bend kinda of make fit, um, you know, but I definitely like the pistol style. It's just fits better in the hand. Um, cores are about the same. The thing downside to this one is like the version one or two of the mini doctor, they use the little thumb screws. You know, you put the coil in, pretty much get it in the front here, and then you thumb screw them in. Uh, the feature on the Venom I like a lot better. We'll show you guys that in a minute. But pretty much setting this thing up, you know, you get your coil you need, bend it where you need it, and then put the thumb screws in, tighten it down until they tighten down, and you're pretty much ready to go. Um, definitely like this one. This one actually comes with two lights on the front of it. You got one letting you know, you know, indicating the unit's on, and then this one's just for trigger pull. This one would turn on when you had the trigger pulled, and it was actually heating up the coil. Definitely like that. Nice safety feature. Decent fan in this one, but you can see, you know, it does overheat. I had the coils misaligned in there. It started to melt the plastic. I'm wondering if the newer one's gonna do that too. But a little bit of issue, I ran into it. But for the most part, this thing definitely got the job done. I think, my first time comparing this, I think this one's gonna heat up the bolt we're about to set up just as fast as the, the Venom will, but we're, only time will tell. The weight on this one's probably a little heavier than the Venom is, but uh, you know it's not a big difference. What do you hold this thing for maybe 30 seconds, set it down and, and break the bolt loose or whatever you're doing, O2 sensors. I've used this thing for brake bleeders, brake calipers, you know, stuck pins, you, you, you name it, I've, I've used this thing for it. This one worked good for it, but it doesn't last long. You know, once, pretty much once protective coating is breached, this is pretty much no good. I just have this in there to remind myself that I need to replace it. Um, but yeah, some of the features on this one, definitely good. Definitely like the trigger, the lights, the fan unit's good. It's been a decent unit. You could find this one. I'll leave the links down in the description. Find this one on Amazon for maybe 300 bucks, 325 now. I think they're a little bit cheaper than they were when I first got this one. Um, but it definitely got the job done. It worked out fine. Now as for the Venom, you know, I've only used this a few times since I've got it. You know, it's pretty much brand new. You know, I definitely messed around with it the first day. Um, 
nice long cord, probably not as long as the other one, the Wyo, but still a decent amount. You know, you probably have to use an extension cord if you're using it, a nice heavy duty shop extension cord. I got one laying around. I always use, you know, when I'm using, whether it's a light or a welder or whatever, I always got an extension cord. But definitely like the quick design of getting the coils in, you know, pretty much instead of using the thumb screws, you just pretty much pop it in, lock it in, you're good to go. So a lot, you know, less messing around trying to get this thing set right and, you know, tighten them evenly and all that stuff. They pretty much just tighten and go. Um, the handle, like I said, is a little bit bigger. So guys with smaller hands, obviously, you might have problems holding it or use it with two hands. But I guess I'll get used to it. It's something I got to get used to. It's definitely better than the straight one they had. Um, the little bit of angle it does help. Um, this one does have one light on the front of it, one LED light, and that is switched a little by the trigger here. You got an on-off switch, so you can have it on to have it on, or just off if you don't need it. Who's working in a dark shop, anyways? But. Uh, it also has a little LED indicator on the outside here. It's, you know, green means good. It means everything's functioning correctly. If it turns red, that means you've got a fault somewhere, whether it's in the plug or the coil or whatever. It'll flash red, let you know there's an issue. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and compare these things. i got a couple bolts here that are the same. We'll get the thermal imager out and see, uh, you know, how fast the Venom heats up as opposed to uh, a cheaper style one and does it get the job done. All right, guys. So I want to start off with the wild one, and I want to try to make it as even as possible. So what I got is I got two fasteners, pretty much the same size, same nut, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same coil on it. So we're going to get the snap-on thermal imager, see how long the wild takes to heat up this, you know, how hot it gets, how long, we'll do this in real time. Um, and then I'll let this coil cool down all the way, and then we'll check with the venom and see how long that one takes. But with this one, pretty much you can see when it's on, it's got one light on. You pull the trigger, that other light's going to turn on let me know you're pulling the trigger. You can hear the fan in it. It's got a nice, decent fan in it. This thing's never really overheated outside of maybe, you know, having the coils misaligned in there and heating it up a little too much and melting the plastic on it. But tighten these up evenly. Get that coil cinched down in there. All right. Let's see if I can do this with two hands here. So we got the thermal imager here. We're going to kind of point it. I'm going to hold it two hands. Hope you guys are getting a good view of that. And we're going to see how long this thing takes to heat up. We're going to have, you can see pretty much the trace is right on the bolt head. Get it on there. And we're going to pull the trigger. I see it smoking already. You can see it's getting hot on there. 100 and over 200 degrees. About what, six seconds in at this point. Let's we'll see if we get this thing to like 900 degrees. We go 842. Pretty much topped off the thermal imager. This thing's smoking pretty good and it's red hot. So that was maybe what 15 seconds with this. Definitely, uh, definitely smoked the coil. That was about 15 seconds with it, and you could see nice and hot. 842 degrees. Pretty much maxed this thing out Fahrenheit. So I'm going to let the, let the coil cool off, and we're going to hit it with the Venom. Get the next one set up. One eternity later. So I waited a good 10-15 minutes, let the coil completely cool off. We'll get the Venom plugged in. A lot quieter. You can hear it real faint. There's a fan in here too, but it's a lot quieter than the uh, wild one. It's definitely plugged in. You can see it's got the switch for the LED light. It's your option to turn it on. It's just one when I pull the trigger, nothing happens. Get the coil put in here. Lock it in. Nice and tight in there. Get the thermal imager on. Alright, got the thermal imager on. You can see pointing it at the fastener. We're at about 80 degrees. So a few degrees more than the last one was, probably because the vise is still a little warm. Get this one on here. Hope you guys are picking that up. Hit the trigger, and you can instantly see it start to calibrate and change. Temperature's going up. I can see it starting to smoke. 200 degrees. Three. 
definitely could smell it. Five, six, I think the max on this was eight something. At seven. Getting close here, definitely red hot. That's about it. it, keeps going back and forth here. There it goes, 842. There we go, all the way maxed out. It seemed like it took longer with the Venom than the cheaper one. But you can definitely see it's nice and hot. The coil is about 500 degrees, 525, somewhere around there. So it's definitely hot. All right, guys. So that's that quick test for you. I'd probably have to say, maybe I'll check it when I edit it, but it definitely looked like the Wyo probably heated that fastener up a little bit faster than the Venom did. I don't know, from where I was seeing it, it just seems like it took a little bit longer. But that might be because, you know, the Venom has safety features in it where, you know, it progressively heats up the fastener or whatever you're heating up, you know, slowly and more steadily than this one, just pretty much, you know, all power to it. Um, you know, I noticed with using this one, you know, I did go through coils pretty good. You know, if the coil was touching metal for anything over 15, 20 seconds, it does cut through the, the Kevlar or whatever they put on there, the protective sleeve on there. Um, you got to be careful when you're using it with that, you know, trying to just hover it over the metal because, you know, these things do use the, the you know, uh, inductive magnetic field to heat up the metal and that's what heats it up from the inside out. It uses magnetic field. Um, but I got no complaints on this one. You know, I, this was a great tool. Um, definitely from China. I remember when I had to order it, I had to make sure I had the US plug on it. This thing, you know, definitely is made in China, but you know, it got the job done. I'll probably end up throwing this to Steve so he has one, you know, because living in the Rust Belt, dealing with this rust, it's almost a must have. But, you know, you're not living in the Rust Belt and uh, need to get those rusty bolts in. Definitely, definitely look into the cheaper version. You not only need the Venom one, you know, if you could get it and afford it, grab it. If not, this definitely does get the job done, but we'll see in a couple years if this thing holds up. As far as the Venom goes, like I said, I had to upgrade. This is one that I personally wanted in the first place. Um, they actually make these in uh, Elgin, Illinois, which isn't too far from, from the shop here, it's probably maybe about an hour or two north from here. Uh, you know, made in the USA, definitely gets the job done. You know, I, I know the history on these. I'm familiar with the version two. Um, you know, definitely a, a nice piece to have, especially living here in Illinois where they use salt constantly and, you know, I mean, the dirt rots away in these cars, you know, every, anything that's on your car pretty much rusts it away and, uh, you know, dealing with these rusty fasteners, this is a must-have, it's a must-have tool. But also paying an extra, you know, 200 bucks as opposed to, you know, buying a cheaper version, like I said, I think I paid like 350 for that one or maybe 400 bucks, you know, this one, I ended up picking up this and I got the coil kit that you can get, I think I paid about 625 or 600 bucks. And I know they have different versions of the coil kit. This is the standard one. They have a long version and a shorter version you could get. This is just pretty much the mid version that I got. You know, these in itself is gonna cost you. You know, you burn through these, pretty much that unit pays for itself. And then you gotta use the coils. You know, they pay for themselves as used. So, you know, when you're using it, try not to, try to get as long life out of these coils as you can. You know, don't hover it around metal, don't touch anything. Try not to heat up any plastic and have any melted plastic on there and all that, because it does eat away at that protective coating. But that's that, guys. Quick comparison on these mini ductors. Living in this area, it's a must-have tool. I got two of them now. Steve's gonna have my old one. I got the new Venom. Maybe I'll give you guys maybe a year or so review or six month review after using this thing heavily. Probably use it more in the winter time, it's summertime, so hopefully I don't have to use it too much. But if, if it's needed, I got it. So, but my opinion, you guys, you know, living down south and not so much, you having to deal with a lot of rust, you need one of these, definitely look into the cheaper version. You know, so far so good on that one. Not heavily used, but using it a lot. Like I said, I personally wanted the Venom. I like the design better. I originally wanted that one before I bought this one, but in Pulse Buy, I seen it was cheaper. I want to see what they're about. That's why I picked that one up a year ago. I'll have an Amazon link down in the description where you can find these things. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.